Greetings! Today I've got something quite exciting uh, to look at and to test and to tear it apart. Um, it's so exciting for me at least. I bought two of them. This is a cordless soldering iron, BLK520 Parkside brand. Parkside is a brand that uh, you can see all sorts of different tools and um, DIY things uh, branded with that uh, sold in Lidl. On it. And usually they're things that are made by um, someone else that just rebranded the soldering iron. It's uh, it feels quite quite handy, and I thought this would be a great tool to add on uh, to what I have over here because sometimes I've got this little thing that I want to solder, just just one pin or just a touch of solder, and you know what? You you have to switch on. I've got the big soldering iron. 60 watt and you've got to switch that on wait for it to heat up then get back to get to soldering and Yeah, then I forget to switch it off and all sorts of things. So it would be nice to have a little one uh, Just a little iron just for those little odd Tiny jobs the iron itself is uh, made out of plastic. There is a bit of a rubber over mold over here So just for to ease the grip and um, Yeah, the plastic, it feels um, feels solid. Now the main body of the iron is made out of one type of plastic and then there is this cap which is made out of different type of plastic. Uh, I'm not sure why they used two different ones. I think that this one is a little bit more elastic so it's less prone to breaking and this one is a little bit more brittle I guess. Uh, it feels stiffer but it has that really shiny uh, coating on it. I don't think it's made out of the regular ABS. There's something else to it probably for you know just in case it gets hot or something. There is a tip over here and it's quite pointy and sharp. It's a round tip not a chisel type but that's fine and and the switch is an interesting arrangement with the switch so you've got a pressy thing and a slidey thing and if you press the pressy thing when the sliding thing is on off you nothing happens but uh, when you press the pressy thing and try to move the slidey thing uh, it it kind of doesn't want to go what you're supposed to do is slide the slidey thing and then press the pressy thing and then it comes on and that's how you're supposed to use it this thing takes three AA batteries in there and it runs off of so it runs off of uh, four and a half volts which is nice because what I'm thinking uh, first one of my first thoughts on this was I'm just going to avoid using batteries and I'm just gonna attach a USB cable to it because it's a 6 watt soldering iron at least that's what it claims to be and a typical phone charger is able to provide about 10 watts so this will be well within spec and yeah it will save me on having to change batteries I'll keep one of them the way it is and the other one I'll just probably attach a cable we'll see if that's a that's a doable thing uh, in a moment when we take it apart it's got nice interesting and clever design feature over here with with this cap so um, look if you if you put the cap on if you finish soldering even though when it's in on position it's not on you have to press it for it to come on but if you put the cap onto it you automatically push the button uh, to the off position which is which is good it's uh, when you put it away it's always off likewise if you slide it into on position the top comes off brilliant i like little quirks like that someone put a little bit of thought to it and that's that's nice let's see if this will actually melt any solder right because that's what it's supposed to do I've got here 0.5 of a millimeter solder uh, wire let's see so I've just pressed it on and how long will it take now there is a little bit of dirt on the soldering tip because I've tried it and it's going already and it's you know it's doing it reasonably well actually for some something battery powered and portable this uh, yeah it does the job okay that is really good actually 
quite impressive. So let's try to desolder something or solder something or that sort of thing. Let's see how it will work in practice. Here I have a power supply board that I pulled out of some sort of device. Oh, those tabs. So this came out of the DVD recorder that I tore apart some time ago. Let's try this small capacitor over here. Uh, let's try to desolder it, see if this will actually do the job. So which one is this? C1402, C1402. So those two pins over here. Let's actually maybe help it a little bit and put a tiny bit more solder on here. It always makes it uh, somewhat easier. Okay, a bit here. A bit here and well that's relatively easy that came out really quickly now the thing is with this I've noticed it yes it does take maybe 10 seconds to fully heat up when you press and hold it uh, but when you're doing something actually it's not cooling all the way down, so it's preheated already. So when it's kept being warm, it's actually a lot quicker to just switch it on and do something. It's only when it's been put away for for a while, and you need that 10 second thing. But in you know quickly when you're doing different things, it actually works quite well. Let's. Uh, well, there is a big heatsink over here. That there's no point even trying. It's not going to happen. This is six watts only. All the heat will just dissipate into the heatsink but let's try something bigger here is another power supply board this one i think is from a skybox um, and let's try the big filter cup over here what is this uh, 100 microfarad 400 volt cap it's got some celastic on which is not going to make it easier but let's give it a shot anyway so on This one's got a really big fat track with extra copper layer, uh, extra solder layer on top of it. So, yeah, I, I suspect it will be struggling over here. This is beyond its capabilities. Yeah. If we hold it long enough, eventually will do it yeah but you can see it's not uh, it's cooling down it's just not not enough power not enough thermal capacity everything gets dissipated into the copper it's uh, it's reasonably thick copper over here and it's got all that solder on top of it so uh, no I think this is not going to work but that's expected this is a tiny thing um, you know six watts it says over here six watts it's it's very little but okay it even though it's uh, not all that it will serve quite well for small things and though a lot of there there is very often that you just need to put a bit of solder on an end of wire stick it into a board solder it in or a couple of resistors or you know this cup over here came out just just as easy as it could really um, and that's um, yeah, it, it depends on what application you're doing. Yes, for small little things, this is brilliant, I think. Um, no, it's not going to replace your big soldering iron at all, but it's a definitely a really handy small tool that, you know, on day-to-day -day use, it could come quite helpful. Right, I talk way too much, let's open it up and see What's actually, what is there inside? Is it going to be all passive components or um, basically just a switch? Or is there going to be some um, some sort of cleverness happening over there? Let's see. One screw over here and that seems... Oh no, there is one more. I can see a screw through here. So there is one hiding right here. Now the other side. Yes, under the CE mark, 
which stands for Conformite a Europe something Conforms with Europe CE that's what it is it's in French but it's also called the China export mark because they whack it on everything that they make this uh, cap over here looks like it's been pressed on the the one with the solder tip so let me see if uh, I should remove this okay, I'm being gentle over here because I really do not want to damage this okay yes it does so this is the entire heating element inside of here and this is just uh, just a connector so that's simple and neat I wonder what sort of heating element is inside right there must be another screw right here there we go what we have inside is absolutely nothing so there is an LED with a resistor that has got a bit of heat shrink on it and that's about it it's uh, you know really basic everything is in this tip the the tip itself has got the heating element and no other markings to be honest so no I'm not going to tear the tip up, tip apart because yeah, I don't want to ruin it, but this is so, you know, simple. Yeah, I'm, go I'm going to put, uh, put a USB cable across it and this will potentially work a little bit better in terms of not wasting batteries all the time. So let's do that right now. This cable here, which um, I've noticed that the plug is already getting a little bit wonky, you need to, uh, you know, angle it right for it to get a connection that's going to get decommissioned so let's do that right now and we've got a usb plug on the end it's uh, yeah reasonably fat wires it's uh, one of those cables that it claims on the socket that it supports 2.1 amp charging which basically means it's a little bit thicker wire at least that's what they promise you so yeah let's strip a little bit of that Okay, let's quickly just measure that those are the right cables. I'm quite sure they are, but I'd never trust myself. So let's plug that into a socket and see how we're getting five volts on the output. 5.2 volts, perfect. And by the way, the tip itself has got a resistance of Two point three ohms ish, about two ohms because the cables have got a little bit. Hold on, let's actually zero them out. So two ohms, one point nine ohms resistance, and that's cold resistance. Um, now the resistance, will, I'm sure, will change when this heats up significantly. Yeah, here is a typical uh, power supply brick that you can get these days with any mobile phone and so on. And this will put out for this particular 5.3 volts a little bit on the high side to account for current losses in the cable. But um, typically you get 5 volts and anything between 1 and 2 amps. Make sure if you do this, make sure you use something that's got uh, more than 1 amp available. What I think I'm going to do is put this wire, the negative one, through like so and solder it onto the tab over here and the red positive needs to go onto this plus this metal um, so it will yeah it will still connect through the switch so let's pull this out and let's just pick this spot because it's the narrowest and we are gonna have to solder to this now when soldering to a piece of metal like that it's not so easy but it can be done first of all get some sandpaper and roughen up the spot where you want to solder to expose fresh metal in case there was any oxide on top of it and then turn up your soldering iron to a little bit higher than usual I'm putting it up to 395 degrees let's give it a moment to catch up 
Yeah, and let's. Heat this up, and there you go. So flows on beautifully onto the surface. Let's just put a blob over here. Yeah, that's good enough. That will do it. And now let's just solder in the wire. And now this one here. One last thing we've got to make a little bit of room for that cable over here, and this should be done easily by just cutting out a small slot in the cover. There you go, modification complete. So we've got cable in. Still switch operates and will it stand? It's a little bit, quite a bit lighter actually now. So I'm thinking I'll put something in the later on here, so some metal bar or something to give it a little bit of weight so it's a little bit more stable. Uh, but essentially uh, the modification is done, so let's do some tests after the modification. Let's switch it on and see. The light still comes on, which means we've corrected the wires correctly. And yeah, it, it melts the solder. Maybe even a little bit quicker because possibly there is a little bit less resistance in the batteries. And we're driving it with, you know, half a volt extra. And with this modification, it's even becoming slightly more powerful because no resistance in the batteries and slightly higher voltage. And 10, 10 watts, yeah, you can do quite a bit with that. So that's going to become, I think, my favorite soldering iron for some time. Now, if you want to get one, they are on sale in Lidl right now. So, yeah, if you want to, rush for it. Um, when I went there today, there was a few left but if you're lucky enough there will still be a few left when you get there uh, that's only if you live in UK now if you don't live in UK and you want to get one of those yeah have a look on eBay I'm sure um, if you do a search you'll be able to find something exactly like this but with just different branding because majority of Parkside things that's what they are I hope you enjoyed this video as usual and I hope you find it informative and entertaining at some point and please subscribe for more random stuff give me a like on this video thanks a lot for watching take care